Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today is Friday, April 26, 2024. That's four years, a month, and a bunch of days since we began coming together every single day with friends from all over the world just to say good morning to each other. It's been a beautiful blessing to say good morning, to learn Torah, to face the world, to make new friends. It's gorgeous. So Deborah and Jem, Penny and Arlene, Uncle Alex, nice to see you, my friend. Love you. Deborah, Penny, good to see you. It's broadcast 1041, and it is day 203 since October 7th. There's a lot to talk about. Let's begin by just loving each other, saying good morning, starting the day. Richard, Carl, and Linda, Peter, good morning. Hi, Sharon. Julianne, hope you're well. Deborah, Dale, Lydia, good morning. Hi, Cecile. Hi, Barry. Good morning. Boker Tov, P.S. Levy. I don't know who you are, but I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Elise, Boker Tov, Judy, good to see you. Ariel, my beautiful daughter. Welcome, welcome. We're going to get ready for Shabbos together. I love that. Rosa and Robin, good morning. Arlene and Timothy, Blair, Natalie, good morning. Hi, Marilyn. Lydia and Nathalia, Diane, Boker Tov, Boker Tov. Deborah, you had knee replacement surgery. Welcome back. Complete healing to you. Hi, Pete. Good to see you. All right, friends, let's take a breath. Ah, Phyllis, so good to see you. Thank you for telling me who you are. Welcome, welcome. Yaniv. Welcome back. It's good to see you. All right. Let's sing a bracha. Let's sing a blessing. Learn some Torah for Shabbat and for Pesach. Rabbi Lisa Rappaport, what a gift to see you here, my friend. Anya and Chana, Amy, Boker Tov. All right. Let's take a breath. Sing a blessing. Learn some Torah. Let this be a reminder to me and to you, never, never proceed a broadcast with a Pesach cookie. Boy, is that hard to sing through. Good morning, everybody. Okay. It's good to see you. It's good to see all of you. I hope that you and yours are safe and well. It's broadcast 1041. It is day 203 since October 7th. The world doesn't get simpler. But it is Pesach, and what I wanted to do is share a little bit of Torah in this moment, for this moment, of this moment. 
because we read a Torah portion just tomorrow. It's Shabbat Chol HaMoed. It's a portion that we read when we're in the cycle of reading Exodus, but it is a very, very powerful and specific voice that we introduce into the flow of Pesach. Now, it happens to be that Shabbat Chol HaMoed, the Shabbat right in the middle of Pesach, is a very special one in my family. It is my daughter Ariel's Hebrew birthday. She was born right after Shabbat Chol HaMoed Pesach. And so this has some very special significance for me. Um, and the Torah reading is of a section where Moses just can't take it anymore. And that might feel like you. That might feel like who we are. This morning in 21 minutes, a group um, being led by the Missing, Fa Missing Families and Hostages Forum will be meeting right outside of the gates of Columbia. And it is clear that we are just beyond ourselves. To see the image of Hirsch alive, the video of Hirsch alive, I think brought back some of our spirit, even though Hamas intended the propaganda video to decimate it. It is so powerful, so powerful to hear the voice. I, I'm not saying this to appropriate Rachel and Jonathan's son. He's theirs, but he's also ours. And to hear the voice of our child, speak, even in anger, even not looking good, that he's alive brought back some hope for me. But Moses is at a point in this Torah reading where he just can't anymore, and the people are rebelling, and God is getting angry, and it's clear that even in the inception of this freedom journey, things are going to fall apart. God says, get out of my way, I'm going to destroy them all and start again with you which is something that God has done a few times previous to Moses with different ancestors. And we can have a conversation with, uh, with God about that. That's what prayer is about. Prayer is not only about praise. It's also about shock, sometimes anger, a lot of doubt. There is place for disbelief in Judaism. It's very important to affirm this. But in this context, here is Moses. And Moses stands in the breach and says to God, you may not do this. You may not do this. How important it is to see the role of a human being using agency to say to the universe, stop. It's not supposed to be like this. You're not supposed to be like this. That's not what the created world is supposed to be. Our children deserve better. And then after God relents, and it's a complicated section of the text, Moses then needs even more and says, just show me who you are. Make sense of this to me. Hareni na et kvodecha. Show me your glory. What is your glory? It's so powerful. Because God says, you can't see me. Nobody can see me. That's not how... This works. It's not what I am. It's not what you are. You can't see eternity. You can't see everything. You can't live like that. And before I move forward in the story and the text, let's just identify both with Moses the need to know why things are the way they are, especially now. And let's also have some compassion for God, because God knows God is too much. We were created in the image of God, but that doesn't make us God. It's hard to be a person. Amplify that by eternity. Poor God watching us. What we're willing to do to each other. So everyone deserves compassion. Moses says, just show me. And God says, I can't show you my whole self, but I'll show you my wake. You know, you ever say that you see the wind? You don't actually see the wind. What you see is the way the breeze moves the branch. We see the wake of God, but we don't see God. And that's what God says to Moshe. I'll put you in the cleft of this rock and I will pass my goodness before you. 
and you will see my wake. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful moment. And when God passes before Moshe, God says, and you might know this, because they say, um, we sing this on the High Holidays. You might know the melody. I'll just sing it like that. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apayim, Verav Chesed, Ve'emet. God, God, abundant in kindness, full of compassion, long forbearing, patient. Now, what's really interesting, I mean, it's really interesting. It's gorgeous. It's God's self-revelation, and it's all about compassion and mercy. We read that this Shabbat. How powerful that we read this, this Shabbat. Compassion and mercy. The journey of freedom that begins with the first and second seders continues. And then we amplify God's self-revelation and the part of God that we are able to access, that even Moses is able to access, is compassion and mercy. Now, when you look at the end of the phrase, I want you to notice something. If you look it up, Exodus, um, I think it's chapter 13. You have to look it up. No, sorry, chapter 23. I think I'm remembering it right. I didn't look it up for today. It continues. Now, when we sing it liturgically, when we're taking out the Torah on the holidays or when uh, it is the high holidays, we end vinake, and God will cleanse us of iniquity. We will be forgiven. But the verse that we read tomorrow does not stop there. The verse doesn't stop there at all. The verse says vinake lo yinake. God will not forgive intentional sin. There's an unintentional sin, and there's an intentional sin. God will forgive us for the mistakes that we make, the imperfections that come along with any journey. But the original Shlosh Midot, the 13 attributes that we read this coming Shabbat, that we'll read tomorrow, they don't include God forgiving us for hurt we intend to incur, to, that we intend to commit. We just take one second and say hi to my dear friend, Rabbi Ari Lubitz. So good to see you here, my friend. Miss you. Chag Sameach. Shabbat Shalom. And I want to point out how radical the action of the prayerer is. What our Siddur, what our prayer books do that the Torah doesn't seem to do. In the Torah, God reveals God's self going all the way through the list of the 13 attributes and then vinake, like we say, and then goes beyond where we go. Lo yinake, but won't forgive, holding generations guilty for the sins of their parents. Now, you know that later in the Torah, in Deuteronomy, it says we do not hold parents, uh, we don't hold children guilty for the sins of their parents. It's very interesting the way the rabbis then say, when children perpetuate the sins of their parents, then they are held guilty. But when they change their ways, when we generationally do tshuva, that changes too. Why am I sharing all this right now? First of all, because it's beautiful, it's ours, it's interesting. But I want to share a midrash about how wonderful and great and miraculous leaders can be. When God continues this revelation and starts saying to the third generation, to the fourth generation, will I hold them responsible? The Midrash, the legend says, Moses throws himself down on the floor and cuts God off. He says, stop, stop. Justice looks like this. It doesn't have to look like that. And the rabbis follow that tradition of Moses when it comes to the, um, the way that we daven, the way that we pray. We recite the 13 attributes, but we stop before the punitive aspects of God's justice come through. What it means to stand in the breach and to say it doesn't have to be like that takes enormous courage 
to stand in front of eternity and say, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be El Rachum V'chanun, more. We can embody God's mercy and compassion more. I know that we are fighting terrible things right now. Our children, our students are fighting terrible things. Our babies, our grandparents are in darkness. I know. For 202 days, we've all learned again. But I think it's important for us to hold on to the moments that are possible that embody rachamim, mercy. I want to tell you of one such moment yesterday. It moved me beyond words. Thanks to the great work of UJA, I have the privilege of visiting different firms and companies and businesses and corporations teaching Torah. And Pesach is a big moment where um, we get invited in a lot. Yesterday, I was at Citigroup headquarters down on Wall Street with, um, with a group that I have taught in the past, but this year, instead of it being the group of Jews coming together for a kosher for Passover catered lunch, which is lovely, and to learn Torah together, this is part of Human Resources DEI. Now, I know DEI is complicated, but there were many, many people together in this room in New York City. There were about 200 people gathered to learn Torah, and it included Jews and Christians and Muslims and just people who wanted to be part of a diversity culture in their corporate family. And then we had satellite link-ups with Sao Paulo and London, Texas and Miami and Tel Aviv. There were about 500 people together. And I could see in the corner, there were a group of, I thought, a group of Muslim employees who were there to learn. And it turns out the Jews went to the Iftar about a month ago that um, was run by HR for them. And the Muslims came to mind. And I made it a point, I was already planning on talking about the themes of Pesach and talking about the particular and the universal, how our tribal liberation story is meant to be shared and it is meant to be a model for what it is to see human dignity as a prerequisite to existence. I cannot be free if you are not free. And of course, as part of this, I emphasize during the Seder where we take the drops of grape juice or wine out of our cups and then we make a blessing. We have sympathy and love and care and compassion, even for those who would hurt us, because after all, the modern term for what the Egyptians were to the Israelites is not only taskmaster, it's terrorist, but even for them we reduce our cup, because the image of God is the image of God. The Seder doesn't let us off the hook. We should not let ourselves off the hook either here. And I talked about my tears, our necessary tears, because we are meant to be compassionate, just as God is compassionate. Even then, even now, and that I cry for everyone, civilians in Gaza, Israeli babies, all of us, everyone deserves dignity. Who doesn't? So I spoke about this for a while. Then when I was done, a bunch of people came up to say hi, and there was one uh, employee who came up to me, and she came up to me, very emotional, and said, I want to thank you for what you said. I'm a Muslim woman. I work here. I have family in Gaza. I've lost seven of my family members. And I'm really appreciative of what Passover means. I didn't understand that. And she was crying, telling me about her family. And I was crying. I'd already spoken about my family. I was crying for her family, as we should. And I asked her if it was okay to hug her. And we hugged each other. We just stood there for a few minutes at Citigroup. And we hugged each other. It doesn't end the problem. But it was a moment. It was a moment. 
because we can hug each other. There are some moments where we can't, but why would we dare miss this? The Torah reading that we will share tomorrow is all about compassion. Yes, in order to become free, sometimes you have to fight. In order to protect your children, sometimes you have to fight. In order to get our family back, sometimes we have to fight. But it is so important to not miss these moments of shared humanity, even now. I don't let this change my ferocious defense of our homeland. I don't, of course not. But I let it in for my own heart to remember to be warm and soft and loving, and I amplify it to you. Because there is more than enough pain to go around. There are more than enough tears. Yes. We're going to have to continue to fight. But if we could find a few more moments like these of shared humanity, I bless us with the ability to let this part of God in again. A little bit of softness, a little bit of compassion, a little bit of love, a little bit good for us. It's good for us to feel that part of our heart again. It's good. It's not easy. It's got to be balanced. But it's good. And we need it. That compassion is who we are. That ferociousness is also who we are. But I should never let my heart be like this. Beautiful teaching of the Kutzka Rebbe, and with that we'll close. Menachem Mendel of Kutsk, the Kutzka Rebbe. We believe that he probably suffered some kind of depression. He really he isolated himself very often, and when he came out of his study to his students, he would often be bellowing. But he says, why does the Torah say around the paragraph of the Shema, V'samtem etvarai ele alevavachem, place these words on your heart. This is my heart. Why does it say take these words, these holy words, and place them on your heart? If you really wanted someone to internalize a message, you don't say on your heart, you would say place them in your heart. And he says this beautiful thing, beautiful. He says, there are times where our heart is actually like this. And if I tell you to put it in your heart, it's just gonna bounce off and go away. So I tell you instead, says the Kutzke Rebbe about the Torah, Take these words and place them on your heart. Because at some point, your heart will do this. And the words will have a place to go. So I want to bless you, friends. I want to bless me. I want to bless you. I want to bless these screaming people on campuses. These uninformed, misguided, dangerous sometimes people. And I'm not pointing at one person and calling them names, but this trend is not safe and it's not wise and it's certainly not loving. I want to bless all of us just to get a little bit more quiet for a minute and let's see how that works. Let's see how that works. It's good for us. As Rabbi Rappaport just wrote, Splendor within love. So, hands on hearts. Let's send our heart all the way east. Let's love our family. Tuck into that, please, friends. A little bit of love for people outside our family, too. See if we can do something with that. Not let down our guard, but reinflate our hearts. We're going to go into Shabbos. It's a special Shabbat, Shabbat Cholamoid. Let's see if something new is waiting for us on the other side. Kolon
ולבב ונימה. נפש יהודי הומיה, ולפתי מזרח קדימה. עין לציון צופיה, עוד לא עבדה תקוותנו, התקווה בת שנות אלפיים, להיות עם חופשי בארצנו, ארץ ציון. וירושלים, להיות עם חופשי בארצנו, ארץ ציון וירושלים. Bring them home now. עם ישראל חי. שבת שלום, friends. מועדים לשמחה. Let's have some joy in the middle of this Chag. See you on Monday. Take care, everyone.